Greetings, Wambui Bahati here, Wambui Made It. This video is a remix. My very first loom knitting video on this channel was a beginner loom knitting video in which I took you step by step through the process of loom knitting if you had never loom knitted before. I thank you for all the compliments that you gave me on that video. A lot of people were very kind and they told me that with that video I had opened up the world of loom knitting for them. There were people though, some people who told me that they appreciated the video but they wished that I could remake it using a light colored yarn. The yarn that I used in the original video was a dark gray bordering on some kind of black shade so it was a very dark yarn. And people contacted me and told me that because of certain visual challenges they had, they were not able to actually see very clearly what I was doing and that they would appreciate it if I would do the video but use a light colored yarn. So that's what this video is. It is the remake of Loom Knitting for Beginners in a pink. That was the color that when I asked around, that was the color that people said would be a great color to use so that they could see exactly what I was doing. So this is a video where I'm using a light pink yarn. And uh, unlike the first video, the first video is in two parts because I start the hat, I start the project, and then I do another video where you I show you how to take it off the loom. So in this video, everything is in one video. We start, we go right through from start to finish. We start our project, which is a hat, and we go right through to the end. Now in the description box, there are, I have the information about the various size looms. If, for instance, how many pegs need to be in a loom if you wanna make a particular size hat. So I'm gonna be making a baby hat because I wanted it to go fairly quickly. But I am gonna take you through the whole process. If you know someone who has not loom knitted or is not sure, or they may have some visual difficulties, perhaps this video can help them to learn how to loom knit as well. And so with all of that said, without further ado, you know what? Let's just get to it. One of the things that attracted me right away to loom knitting is the fact that it was very inexpensive to get started with this craft. These are the tools that you need. You need a loom, some yarn, some scissors, and of course the loom knit hook or pick. And eventually you're going to need a darning needle. I recommend a plastic darning needle. Okay, now the first thing I always recommend before you get started with the actual loom knitting is to take your yarn and turn your yarn into a ball of yarn, however you know to do that, turn it into a ball of yarn. Now, there are those who will suggest that you can just use the yarn as it is without turning it into a ball. You can pull out an end usually from the yarn and just get started and pull from the inside of the uh, skein or ball of yarn. I have done that and sometimes it works beautifully and sometimes it does not. To avoid any frustration, especially if you're a beginner loom knitter, I'm going to suggest that you get your yarn and however you can turn your yarn into a ball, turn your yarn into a ball. That way you will have walked the length of the yarn. You know if there are any uh, uh, knots or tangles ahead of time. You know where the weak spots are in your yarn. You may decide that you want to disconnect something and reconnect it in a way that's uh, smoother for you. But I do recommend that before you get started, turn your yarn into a ball of yarn and I believe you can avoid any possible problems or frustrations just turn it into a ball. Okay, now the yarn that I'm going to be using is by Loops and Threads and it is called Lush Alpaca. I mainly try to use 100% acrylic because I know it washes beautifully. I didn't see any 100% acrylic in the light pink. This color to me was just ideal. So I'm using this uh, yarn. Now, one of the things I do recommend, I'm gonna call this, at, 
for beginners, I'm just going to call this a regular loom. This is a regular loom, and eventually you'll start to learn about the width between the pegs and the gauges and so forth. But right now, to keep it new for the new people, uh, just simple and easy, um, I'm going to call these regular looms. These are the looms that usually come in those packages that you get at the crafting store. And a lot of times they come with at least three different sizes. I'm going to call them regular looms because for the regular looms, I would suggest you want to use a yarn that's kind of thick. I think that the finished hats look better when you're using a thick yarn on these types of looms. Now, if you do have thin yarn that you want to use, then for the thin yarn, I would suggest that you get two different, let me get over here, that you get two different, for instance, this one's a little thin, but I would suggest then you make two balls and you work from those balls as if they're one. So you want to have double strands. So if your, your yarn is thin, then you can work. I started off working with double yarns. In fact, for a long time, I thought that was what you needed to do for loom knitting is use double yarn. So you would make two balls instead of one, and then you would just match the yarns. This is not an exact match, but I'll show you. So you would be loom knitting with something that looks like this. Okay, so you would have two balls and you'd grab both of them, but you would work it with them as if you were working with one strand. So you would just do everything as if it were one. Okay, but if you have a thick yarn, then uh, the thick yarn is fine to use by itself. So that's what I'm going to be using today is I'm going to go ahead and use this thick yarn that I have right here. So now once you have made your yarn into a ball, I'm going to put everything else aside because what we want to focus on now is the yarn itself. And so once you have made your, your yarn into a ball, you're going to take the end of the yarn, all right, and you're going to go in maybe about 10, 11 inches, okay? And when you get to that 10, 11, it doesn't have to be precise, but you want to have a pretty good end out here. You're going to go in and you're going to make a loop. You're going to make a loop however you know to make a loop in yarn. You're going to make a loop. Okay, so make a loop. All right. Once you've made the loop, let me do that again. This is how I make my loops. I just cross over like one of those awareness ribbons. Okay. And then once I have that, I put the awareness ribbon over and pull from that tail in because going forward this short piece that sticks out here this end piece we're going to refer to this as the tail so we have the tail we have the loop and we have the working yarn so the working yarn is the yarn that is attached to our source or attached to our ball okay so that's what we want to do so let's do that again you're going to go in about 10 11 inches, you don't have to be precise, but you're going to go in, and once you go in, you're going to take at that 10, 11, or 12 inch mark, and you're going to make a loop. So I make an awareness ribbon type thing, and then I take the awareness ribbon over on top of the tail and pull it through. Okay, so however you know to make a loop, though, make a loop. Okay, so we have our tail, we have our loop, and we have our source yarn. Okay, now we're ready to get our loom. So here's my loom. And what you want to do is identify a first peg. You want to choose a peg on your loom that you know is always going to be your first peg because we're going to start working around the peg. So you want to always know when you're back at the end and back at the beginning. Now, on most of what I'm going to call the regular looms that come from the crafting stores, you're going to find that there's a little jut out uh, peg. These are called the pegs. There's a jut out peg that's out here that I, I like to refer to as the lonely peg. But it is really called the anchor peg. And it is used for different projects uh, to start you off and can be used in different projects for 
different in different ways actually. But I am not going to start by putting my loop on the anchor peg. I'm going to use my anchor peg to let me know where my first peg is. So my first peg for me is always just to the right of my anchor peg. Okay, so that means that when I come around, I'm going to know that this is my last peg over here on the other side of the anchor peg. All right, so choose a first peg. Now, sometimes you may have a loom that doesn't have that anchor peg or that little jet out peg down there. On those particular looms, in a lot of cases, there is one peg that is a different color. And so that one peg that is a different color will be your first peg. If you feel that or you don't see you have some loom that doesn't have any kind of markings on it, then what I suggest is my favorite thing to mark <laughs> looms with is nail polish. I suggest you take some nail polish. If you don't have nail polish, then uh, a marker will do or put a rubber band around the base of it. Anything you need to do to mark a peg to let you know where your first peg is because where we want to start, we want to always make sure we're starting at that same peg. Okay, so I'm going to be using the peg that is just to the right of my anchor peg. And so now you're going to go back, get your yarn, and you're going to get the loop. You're going to see the loop, and you're going to take the loop, and you're going to put it on whatever peg you have decided is your first peg. Okay, so this is my first peg. Put the loop around the first peg, and I'm going to tighten it. Okay, tighten it, tighten it. All right, and now I'm going to take this yarn, and I'm going to drop it inside, get it out of the way for right now. Okay, so now um, I have the loop on the first peg. And what we're going to do is we're going to be making a stitch that is called the Loom Knit E-Wrap Stitch. And the way that starts is we're going to take this yarn and we're going to make a wrap or make a loop around each of the pegs on this loom. So we're going to count this first loop as one, one loop, one wrap. So this first peg has already been wrapped. Now what we want to do is get a loop or a wrap on the rest of these pegs. And so we're going to go in here and we're going to wrap around like that. Now this is called the E-wrap stitch because what we're doing is we are making what looks like the cursive E, the cursive small E. And so we're going to wrap our pegs with this cursive E wrap. And thus it is called the loom knit E wrap stitch. Okay, this is the beginning of the E wrap stitch. So I want to go back and then we're going to keep going, but I do want to just always make sure we're all on the same page. So what we did was we took our loop and we put it on whatever we are considering our first peg and we're going to just take this tail yarn put it inside hold it outside whatever we need to do to just kind of hold it out of the way give us a little traction so that we can get started with our wrapping and we're going to take this yarn the work, working yarn we're going to go here and wrap because that one the first one the loop is considered a wrap so we, now we need to wrap the next one we're going to wrap the next one and we're going to wrap each peg we're going to keep wrapping until each peg has been wrapped with this e wrap so think of the cursive e and we're wrapping and we're wrapping and so we're just going to do this all around the loom and that's why it's important to know where your first peg is so that we know when we are back where we started okay so we're going to keep on wrapping and wrapping and wrapping and I'm going to come in a little bit so that you can even have a closer look at what we're doing here and so we're just wrapping around each peg 
we're just going to wrap. Wrapping the peg, we want to give every peg an e-wrap. We don't want to skip any peg. All of them will get a wrap. And now we see we are back where my first peg is. Let me get this out of the way now. First peg is. And so we're going to go ahead and wrap. So now I've come to my last peg. Now, the first time you do this, you're going to keep going. You're going to do the same thing again. Because in order to have a complete e-wrap stitch, in order to make one e-wrap stitch, you need to have two loops on each peg. And the way we're going to get that is we're going to go ahead and start again. So now we are putting a second loop on each peg. And so we're going to keep going and going. And there you go. <laughs> so we are putting a second loop. So now all of the pegs, by the time we get back to the beginning, are going to have one, two loops on each peg. So we're going to keep wrapping. We're just going to keep doing that e-wrap all around, just like we did before. And we're not going to skip a single peg. Every peg is going to get an e-wrap. So we're going to wrap and wrap and wrap. And that's what we're going to do. We're just going to keep wrapping here until every peg has two loops on it. So we're going to keep wrapping. All right. All right, now we're back at our last, our last peg. Now, now we have two loops on every peg. Let me just push this inside because it is in my way here. So I'm going to push this tail in so that, get inside tail, get inside, come on. Okay, so we're just going to put that tail inside. All right, so now we have wrapped, we have two wraps on each peg. Now when we get back to this last peg, okay, we have to be careful because if we don't hold it, guess what, it's all going to unravel. So we're going to take a finger, any finger that's behind inside this loom here, and when we do our last wrap on our last peg, we want to take a finger and hold that in place so that it doesn't unravel. Now we need to hold that just until, give us enough time to get our hook. And once we have our hook, we're going to go to this last peg where we're holding it with our finger so it doesn't unravel. We're going to take that bottom, going to go into the groove. All of your pegs should have a little groove. Going to take this hook, go into the groove of the bottom loop, grab that loop, and pull it kind of out, up, and over. It may be a little difficult. To first time that you're going to pull it over. Now, once you've pulled that loop up over that top loop, guess what? You can let go. It's not going to unravel. It's not going anywhere now. And so now, what we're going to do is we're going to do that for the whole, all around the, the loom. So we're going to take the bottom, okay, we're, mm, a string. We're going to take the bottom and pull it up over the top, okay? And then we're going to keep going the whole way around. We're going to take the bottom up and over. The bottom up and over. The bottom. And we're just going to do that. And now we are completing uh, the loom knit e-wrap stitch. Because the loom knit e-wrap stitch is only complete when you've made two loops on each peg. And you pull the bottom up and over the top. And that's what we are doing. And we are loom knitting now. So just go around to each one of these pegs. And we're going to go to the bottom and up and over. Bottom and over, bottom. And that's what we're doing. And we're going to go all around. We're not going to skip any pegs. We're going to go to the bottom, up and over. Bottom, up, and over. And we are loom knitting. OK? Now, there you go. So there. 
And now we're back at our last peg, and we can tell because we marked our first peg. Now, we have these beauti this beautiful row here, and look inside. You can see it's starting to form into something already. So what we want to do is we have this beautiful row of, these, of this e-wrap stitch on the loom, and it's going to be sitting up high. It's going to be at the top of the loom. What we want to do is push it down. The reason we want to push it down, we're going to push it down like this. reason we want to push it down is because we want to make another row of the e-wraps on top. So we're going to make room. We got to push it down so we have room to do another row of those wraps. Okay, so we're going to push everything down. Just push everything down, 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 around the whole loom. Just push it down, push it down. Okay, now we have pushed it down. Now we have room on top to do another row. So we're going to get our working yarn. We're going to go to our first peg because we marked it. We know where our first peg is. We're going to do that e-wrap around the first peg just as we did before. And we're going to do the e-wrap around the next peg. We're going to e-wrap and we're e-wrapping and we're going to do that putting those e-wraps on, putting those cursive e's around each peg as we go. We're not going to skip a peg and now see what we're doing is we're making, we're putting each peg will now have two loops on it. Okay? So we're going to keep on now that we're putting two loops back on each of the pegs. And we're going to go around every peg and make sure that every peg has two loops. And so we're going to do that. And now you're going to go all around. You're going to come back to your last peg and remember what we need to do so that it doesn't unravel, right? When we wrap that last peg, we need to take a finger and go in and hold that yarn in place so that it doesn't jump out of place because we need it to be held in place just long enough for us to get our hook. And once we get our hook, we're going to go into the groove, get that bottom loop, and we're going to pull it up, 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 and over like that. Now we can let go. We're good. It's not going to unravel now. We're going to go ahead and lift up all of these bottom loops up over the top. Okay, so bottom over the top. All right, so my tail yarn is finally starting to really bother me here, so I'm going to go ahead and push it inside now because I want it to be out of the way. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to take these bottom loops and pull them over the top. We're just going to pull them over the top like that. Okay, so that's what we're doing, taking the bottom over the top, and we are going to go all around the loom. Now, so far what we have done is what we're going to do until we have our hat the height that we want it to be. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to keep taking the bottom and pulling them over the top like we're doing now. Do not skip any. Just pull the bottom up and over, up and over, up and over. Okay, up and over. And we're going to keep going around until, okay, we're back to our last peg, which means we're back to our first peg. So, if you recall, the last time we had our, all of our rows at the top, we needed to push them down because we need to add another row of wraps and we need to make room for that row of wraps. And so that's what we're going to do now. We're going to push it down. And so what we are doing, we're basically just going to keep repeating over and over. Like for now, we're going to push down. Once the 
we have one row and it's at the top of our loom. We're going to push that one row down. We're then going to take the working yarn. We're going to find our first peg and we're going to start wrapping. And we're going to do the E wrap and the E wrap, E wrap, and we are going to wrap all around just as we did before. Right now, we're just going to keep repeating. Like I said, we're going to keep repeating the same procedure until we have our hat as tall as we want it to be. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to keep e-wrapping around every single peg. So just keep e-wrapping, e-wrap, doing that cursive E. And okay. Now we're back at our last peg, meaning that in order for it to not unravel, we got to take a finger. And once we wrap that last peg, we're going to hold this, whatever finger you want to use, you need to hold it with a finger because that's going to give you time to get your loom knit hook. And then once you have your hook, you're going to go into the bottom, pull that up and over the top while you're holding it. Once you have it over, you can let go. And then we're just going to, now that we have two loops on each peg, we're going to make it one. We're going to make it one by going to the bottom and lifting it up and over. And so this is the procedure. This is what we're going to do. And so we're just going to keep doing this all around. And we're, when, when we have two loops on a peg, then the next time we want to go is we're going to take that bottom loop up over the top and make it one loop again. So that's what we're doing making it one loop okay and you're just going to go all around like that all right and so i think i'll do one more wrap with you and then i'm going to go away and come back when i have the hat just about ready to be taken off the loom and then i'll show you how to complete your hat and get it off the loom so that you can put it on your head. Okay, so let's see. And now we're back at our last um, peg. And now we have one loop on every peg, but the loops are at the top. So you got it. We're gonna push them down to make room for the new row of wraps that we want to do. But look inside, you can see we're, look, we're making something. <laughs> Something's happening in there. Okay, so we're gonna push it all down. Push it down. Push it all down, all around, because we wanna make room for the next row. All right, get our working yarn, go to our first peg, because we have marked it, we're going to wrap and wrap and wrap and that's what we're going to do and by now by the, you should know that by the time we wrap the, get two loops on each peg then we're going to take that bottom peg and pull the bottom up over the top so i'm going to keep making the e wraps all around this peg this loom wrapping every peg every peg every peg every peg okay there you go every peg peg and we're doing the cursive e wrap the loom knit e wrap stitch and we're going to go until we're at our last peg and we know because we know where our first one is so this is our last one Oop! You see? Okay, that was an example of unraveling. So you don't want that to happen. So as soon as we get it to our last peg, we're going to hold it in place so it doesn't unravel. And that's going to give us a chance to get our pick 
or hook, go in the bottom, up and over. Once we have done that one, we can let go. All right, and now we're ready to go pull the bottom over the top, bottom over the top. Okay, so I'm gonna go away and I'm gonna come back when it's almost time for me to take my hat off the loom, okay? So I'm gonna see you in a little while. So just keep repeating. This is how it's coming along. Now at the bottom, you're gonna notice that the end is curling up. This is the part that's gonna go across your head. This is gonna be the top part of the hat here and this is the part that goes around your head, uh, the opening right here. And as you'll notice, is kind of curling up here, and that cannot be avoided. That's something that comes later on. I have a lot of videos that deal with how to not have this curl. You, there, eventually, you can learn how to do a brim for your hat, or you learn how to make a, uh, if you know more than one stitch, then you can also avoid the curling. But that is how the hat is going to look because we're just using one stitch. And it's not bad. It's cute. It works. I have a lot of hats that have this little curl in it. So I just wanted to show you what yours should be looking like at this point. And so now I am just going to continue what we were doing, which was wrapping, wrapping, wrapping. And once we have two loops on every peg, we're going to pull the bottom loop up over the top loop. And so we're going to just keep going like this. And so I'll be back when it's about time to take the hat off the loom. And I'll show you how we're going to do that. Here's what I'm looking like right now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going, I'm working on my last row of pulling the bottom over the top because when you're ready to take your hat off, you want to have one row of loops or wraps on the peg, only one. Okay, so we've pulled that up and now we have just every peg has only one loop at the top. And at this point, if we were going to add more, this would be the, the part where we would push this down so we could make room for our next row. But we're ready to take it off. This is going to be, I'm thinking, a small toddler, a small toddler's hat. And so this one, I wanted it to be around the 7 inches tall. So this is how I'm measuring. I take the measure, measuring tape and I put it inside next to um, the loop. And then we're, I'm just going to pull it across roughly if I can. And now, so with a little bit of the hat turned up, we, we have roughly uh, seven inches here. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, you know what? This is as tall as I want the hat that I'm making for this um, toddler. So we are, have finished with, like I said, one row of loops. If you have two rows of loops, you want to go ahead and take that bottom over the top until you have one row left. Okay, so now instead of pushing them down to make room for another row, we are at this point going to take our working yarn. Okay, so you're going to take your working yarn and you're going to go in and you're going to wrap that working yarn around the whole perimeter of the loom. So. That's what we did. We took our working yarn and we came in here and we're just wrapping it around the whole perimeter of our loom. And we did that once. We're going to put our thumb to hold that in place because we don't want that to come off because we're going to do it a second time. So we're going to go around the whole perimeter. We're going to come back and we're going to hold that one with our thumb. We're going to do it one more time. So we're doing three revolutions. This is our last 
revolution. We're going around the whole perimeter of the loom. And we're going to get back to that first one. Put our thumb there. Now we're going to get our scissors. And we're going to cut. Too late now. <laughs> Unless we tie this back together, we're no longer attached to our source yarn. Okay, so we're going to put that over there. And now this is what we have. Now we're going to take that really long piece of yarn. We're going to unwrap it. Unwrap it. Now we're going to take the end of the yarn. And by the way, we are done with our pick. We're done with the pick. And so what we're going to be using now, we're going to take this yarn and we want to put this end of the yarn through the eye of this darning needle. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. The eye is pretty big in a darning needle, so you should be able to make it okay. So you're going to get that yarn through that needle like that. All right, so now we have our needle threaded with the yarn. All right, so we're going to pull it down so it doesn't slip out. We don't want it to jump out but we do want to work with a single layer in the beginning. Okay, so we're going to pull enough down so that it j doesn't jump out and so that it is easy to work with. All right, so now we're going to pick up our loom. We're going to find, again, our first, our first loom, our first loop on our first peg. And here's our yarn here at the last one. We're going to go back and we're going to get this one. And what we're going to do, and I'm going to come in a little bit so you can see even better. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this darning needle and I'm going to go back into the first one here. And we're going to go down into the groove. All right? And we're going to get that loop on that needle. And guess what? We're going to pull it off and pull this through. Okay? I'm going to pull the yarn through. We're going to go to the next one. We're going to get that loop. Okay. We're going to pull it off and we're going to pull the yarn through. All right. And this is what we're going to do until we've gone all around. Go from the top, go inside the groove, go underneath. Okay. And you're going to pull that loop off and pull the yarn through. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. Now, you, when you've done this for a little while, you pull it off, pull the yarn through. One of the things you might decide to do, you don't have to do it this way, this is perfectly fine what we're doing, but you can say, you know what, I'm good. I'm gonna go in and get one, and I'm gonna pull it off. I'm gonna get a second one, I'm going to pull it off. I'm even going to get a third one. I'm going to make sure I go down underneath, get that loop and pull it off. And then I'm going to pull the yarn all the way through. So either way, it's OK. If you want to get more than one at a time to pull the thread through. So you're going to go from the top into the groove, get that loop, take it off, and pull the yarn through. All right. And then when you have the yarn through, you're going to go to the next one. This time we're going to get one. We're going to get two. We're going to get three. How about that? And pull it off. And you know what happened? Okay, three. <laughs> and there you go. So we have three. We're going to pull the yarn through. All right? And so we're going to just do this. I'm going to go around. I'm going to keep getting two at a time. And I'm going to pull the yarn through. And that's what we're going to do until we come all the way back to where we started. And so again, if we, what we're doing is this way. If you want to just do it this way to start, you can. Just take one loop at a time and pull the yarn through. You're going to go from the top, go down in that groove, get that loop, pull it off, pull the yarn through. Okay, and that's what we're going to do all around. OK, 
Okay, so pull down through, and we're going to go to the next one. Pull from the top, get that loop, pull it off, pull the yarn through. Okay, go from the top, get that loop, pull it off, and pull the yarn through. All right, and so I'm going to get one off, I'm going to get two off, I'm going to get three off, and pull the yarn through. Pull the yarn all the way through. Okay? So, what we're doing is we're getting the loop, take it off, pull the yarn through. Okay? And get it off, pull the yarn through. And we're going to do this until we get all the way around where we started. And one off, and two off. All right, we are all the way through. the loom. You're going to put your hat through there and now we're done with the loom. And here is what we have. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to close up this opening that is in the top of our hat. So what we want to do is put the yarn and put everything inside. Put everything inside. Because what we want to do is we want to work from the outside. So we're going to flip the hat and we're going to be working, I said the outside, we want to work from the inside. Okay, so here is our very long yarn. We want to close up the hole. And so we're going to pull this working yarn that we put through the loops. We're going to pull it and help us, that's going to help us to close the holes there. And then once we have pulled as tight as we can, we're just going to bunch it, bunch it up, pull it as tight as we can, bunch it up. And now we're going to take our darning needle and we're actually going to go through some of the loops here and tighten it up and just, there's no right or wrong way. You're working on the inside, so the yarn is not going to show on the outside, but you just want to go through and Try to connect some of these loops so that it's even tighter so that we can make sure there's no hole in the top of our hat. And so we're closing it up. We're going to keep pulling on the working yarn really tight as we work. And we're just going to kind of go across. Again, you're on the inside and you don't want to um, push your needle too deep or so deep that is going to show on the outside of the hat. We want to keep everything here on this side, but we do want to connect loops and pull loops together and do what we can to close up the hole in our hat so that we don't have a hole in our hat. <laughs> so we're going to keep pulling like this and then just so already we pretty much close the hole, but we want to make sure that the hole is pretty secure. So we're going to keep doing this, just going in and out, catching loops across and on the side and go around and we're going to pull the yarn 
through. Okay, I think it's pretty secure. We're going to pull really tight. I don't see the hole. And so what we're going to do now is we're just going to do put our needle in. This is going to, and I'm going to wrap this around there. It's kind of like tying it, making a, a kind of a knot there. So there we have it. Okay, so we've, so again, there's, there are no hard, fast rules about how to do this. Your goal is to close up that hole and make it secure. So armed with your needle and your yarn, you're going to do what it needs to happen so that the hole is secure. And so now I'm just going to take this one more time, go through here if I can. Maybe it's too tight. <laughs> okay, we'll go over here and I'll just make one more, one more pull through. All right, then we're gonna, we are so done. And so now uh, the top of our hat is secure. I'm gonna cut this maybe about six or seven inches. I'm gonna cut that yarn. And now I'm gonna take the yarn out of this needle here, take this yarn out, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this short yarn in, and what I want to do with this short yarn that is attached to the hat here, I'm going to uh, thread the needle with this yarn, and with this yarn, I'm just going to use it to kind of hide uh, the yarn, so now that I have the yarn in the needle, I'm just going to take it and just, again, just kind of go through any loops that I see, not going to the outside, but I'm just kind of burying this tail, this tail yarn that's sticking out here. So we've already tightened the hat, so it's not a matter of it uh, being very tight. We just are kind of putting it through and through so that it kind of gets lost and so that when we cut the yarn, the last time, okay, so now I have it through there. I'm going to pull it. I'm going to pull it tight and I'm going to cut because when I cut, I want it to jump back in there so that we don't even see that. Okay, so now we don't have, the tail is not showing. It has disappeared. Okay, let's turn it over and see what we have. Okay, and there is our hat, the top of our hat. Now one more thing we want to do, we're going to do the same thing we did with that last yarn. We're going to come down here and we're going to get this yarn, that our beginning tail yarn, and we're going to thread this yarn through, cut that to make it a little more even to get through the eye of the needle. All right, so now we're going to thread this one through, this needle, that wasn't very good. All right, so we're going to put this yarn through this needle. There you go. All right, so once we have the yarn, this was our beginning tail yarn. We're going to do the same thing. There's nothing for us to really tighten. What we want to do is kind of just push it through and back or through these yarns. And staying on the end is a good idea because we already know the end is going to the ends are going to be rolling up. So we're going to go this way with the yarn and pull that through like that. All right. And now we're just kind of going to go back the other way through some of the loops, just hiding this yarn. And as I said, we're not tightening anything. We just want the yarn to kind of disappear at the end. So we're going to put it through, pull, and we're going to find the end of the yarn. Can we, can we? And now we're going to pull it. We're going to pull it tight so that when we cut it, it's going to jump back in there. So we're going to pull it tight and we're going to cut it. And now it has jumped back in there. Where is the end of the yarn? So this is our hat. So there you go. How to loom knit the E-wrap stitch and make your first hat.